I visited Sapporo at the beginning of last month as a quick escape from the hot weather back in Thailand. First stop we went to was a ramen alley. Famous for being the origin for miso ramen, I suggest visiting restaurants here earlier at around 5pm, as the lines for the more popular restaurants do get quite long. The next morning we went to Nijo Fish Market. Known for its fresh seafood and sashimi rice bowls, I would go early on an empty stomach to stop by for all the delicious food there. About a five minute walk away stood a Japanese tea shop founded in 1933. This was one of my favorite stops in the trip, as I watched the owner passionately prepare teas from all around Japan. The parfaits are also very much worth a try. In the afternoon, we visited Nakajima Park to soak in Sapporo's winter scenery. I came across two peaceful shrines along the way. However, because it snowed so heavily, one of them turned out to be closed. In the evening, we bought a ticket for the JR Tower Observatory. I found it to be much smaller than I thought, so I personally wouldn't recommend going. Being in Sapporo, I knew I had to try the soup curry. It was a warm and hearty meal to end the night. The next morning, we made a quick stop at Kinotoya Bake. The cheese tart was good, but the apple pie was what made us come back the next day. We then made our way to Odori Park, in time for the opening day for the Sapporo Snow Festival. There are a ton of food stalls situated in the park, and also scheduled shows throughout the day for you to look for. It was forecasted to snow heavily in the next day, so we decided to take our chance to go up to Mount Moiwa. On the way there, we stopped by Café Blanc, a relaxing space with cozy decoration. From the foot of the mountains up to the observatory, I was surrounded with surreal views of the city. We had gone at the perfect time as the sun began to set and the lights illuminated the city. We then had our dinner at Jules, a restaurant at Mount Moiwa, with a beautiful panoramic view of what we had witnessed earlier. The shuttle bus from Mount Moiwa stopped at the other end of Odori Park, which we did not get a chance to see during the day. It felt as if the snow festival became livelier at night. For a late night snack, I suggest stopping by Chow Chow for their famous brick gyoza. It was so addictive that we had to order seconds. The next day, we visited Maruyama Park. Originally famous for its row of cherry blossoms in spring and lively Hokkaido Shrine Festival in June, its peaceful winter landscapes are just as picturesque.
next we stopped by Hokkaido Shrine. Although we got lost along the way and never made it to the actual shrine, just being there felt unreal. It was so quiet it seemed as if we were there alone. After rummaging through the heavy snow, we had to have yakiniku as a way to finish off our trip. 